Good day, New York. They want to be big, they want to feel big and strong. We'll find out why more and more young people are pumping up with steroids. Plus, Ivana Trump, single and succeeding. I also always had a great confidence in myself. And, and I knew that I would be able to support myself. Tomorrow on Good Day New York, right here on Fox 5. Today, the stunning conclusion of our exclusive reports on the Son of Sam killings. The evidence mounts that David Berkowitz did not act alone. And now, the mother of one of his victims speaks directly to Berkowitz. Inside Edition, straight ahead. We got the story. The next flight to Chicago. Today, more startling secrets revealed by David Berkowitz. The killer who terrorized New York City continues his exclusive interview. Were any of the 44 shootings done by females? Uh, yes. Would that have been one shooting or two? Uh, one I know of, possibly two. And he also talks about how he has been the victim of a savage attack. Another inmate tried to take my life by, uh, cutting my throat with a, a prison-made razor weapon. He's just a sick maniac. He's an animal. And animals, like everything else, should be caged. Today, a victim's mother pleads with Berkowitz to tell her who murdered her daughter. I just want her to kill her. That's all I've ever, ever wanted. Two, one. Bill O'Reilly, thanks for watching Inside Edition today. As the killer, David Berkowitz, sits behind bars, his words are causing many to look at the Son of Sam killings in a different light. Over the past two days, Berkowitz has told Inside Edition that he did not act alone, that others were involved in the murders of six young people. And many believe him, including the mother of one of the victims. In our first report today, that mother confronts Berkowitz, and Maury Terry examines the terrible crime that haunts this woman. The killing of Stacy Moskowitz highlighted the emotion and tragedy of the Son of Sam case, fueled largely by the anger and pain of a grieving mother. And let them see those children's faces and those blank eyes that don't stare and those faces that can't smile anymore. Let him see that for the rest of his life. And I hope he lives a long time with this in his heart. The full force of Misa Moskowitz's fury was vented directly at Berkowitz after his arrest. An arrest charging him with the killing of Stacy Moskowitz. Berkowitz now says that although he was present at all of the murders, he wasn't always the hitman. You mean before the shooting occurred? Right. You would have been out of the neighborhood before the yeah, shooting some occurred? Yeah, sure. I see. So there were some instances you didn't even see them right, happen. Right, right. Yeah. He says a case in point was the murder of Stacy Moskowitz and the blinding of Robert Violante in the last Son of Sam attack in Brooklyn. There is strong evidence to support his claim that he was not the gunman in this shooting. First, a young man named Tommy Zeno was parked directly in front of the victims and watched the attack in his rearview mirror. He described the gunman as having messy blonde hair and a light gray shirt that was out of his trousers. Uh, he was in, he looked like he was in good shape because after he fired the shots, he took right off it, back into the park fast. Do you believe it was David Berkowitz who pulled the trigger that night? I didn't believe it was him then, and I don't believe it's him now. Why? Because of his shape when he took off and ran, and then a week later, we seen David Berkowitz, and what he looked like, I don't think he was physically capable of doing that. This is the sketch police drew from Zeno's description, but it was never released to the public even though cops described Zeno as their best witness in all the Son of Sam shootings. And also, there's the issue of the parking ticket, which Berkowitz received at the scene. According to the statement of Cecilia Davis, a resident in the neighborhood, Berkowitz could not have killed Moskowitz because of that citation. No, he couldn't because I seen him taking off the ticket. He was still watching the police officers giving the rest of the cars tickets. And he followed the police officer. He could never go back to the black gun because I'd seen him. Berkowitz now admits that Mrs. Davis was right. Best as I recall, I uh, uh, drove away. Um, there was a police car there, and I drove behind them and uh, followed them for a while to see where they were going. And then they, they turned off somewhere, and uh, I continued going. Your confession wasn't true. 
Did you, in fact, try to stop that shooting from occurring? Sure. Could you tell me about that? Was this when you saw your car was ticketed? Right, right, yeah. I just wanted to get out of there. I felt uncomfortable about the whole thing, and I, I felt that this was pointless. I was just sick of everything. And, uh... But the parking ticket led cops to David Berkowitz. And ironically, although he later returned to the neighborhood, he says the real killer was in a yellow VW that was spotted speeding from the scene and was even chased through the streets of Brooklyn by a witness. But I had to hate somebody. And the only one I knew, the only name I got was Berkowitz. So I had to hate David. I mean, I had to hate somebody. Over the years, both Nisa and Jerry Moskowitz have studied the evidence and come to believe that although Berkowitz was involved, he did not hold the gun that killed their daughter. In my opinion, the New York Police Department covered it up. The city covered it up. I don't know what the New York City Police did. I still don't know what they did. I feel the city did wrong. They never followed up the case. And I heard quotes from judges that this case would break wide open in New York. And when it does, there's going to be a lot of heads rolling. I, I... Now that David Berkowitz has finally spoken out, that day may be drawing closer. The Moskowitzes know that he holds the answers. And before my visit with them was over, Nisa Moskowitz watched what he had to say and made a personal plea to him. I would deliver that videotaped message to Berkowitz. I hated you because you were the only name I knew of. And I had to put my hate somewhere. You're not the same person I saw 16 years ago. You talk differently, you act differently, and your mannerisms are... Well, you're not the same person. I just want her killer. That's all I've ever, ever wanted. If I thought you were the one, then I wanted you. And since I understand that you are not the killer, there's something in my power I wouldn't do to have you say his name. Do you have anything that you'd like to say to Mrs. Moskowitz, David? I just want to say that I'm very sorry that all this happened, and my heart truly goes out to her as well as all the other people, none of whom I, I knew. And I was just a fool to uh, listen to the devil, and uh, I wish I had uh, sense enough to walk away from... Uh, but I should have walked away from a long time ago. And I just pray for those that were hurt by the Son of Sam shooting, that, that uh, God continues to heal their, their lives and it, the survivors, that God continues to reach out and help those people. I pray for them. And in Christ's name, I pray for them. Berkowitz was obviously moved by the message of Nisa Moskowitz. But he insisted he was unable to give up the name of Stacy's killer at this time, again citing fears for his own family safety. Nevertheless, I believe that this case can finally be solved. Berkowitz has provided enough solid information to confirm what has been probed for years. That is, that he was not the lone son of Sam Killer. He has given up the names of accomplices who are no longer living and has provided strong leads to the identities of those who are still out there. It is both heartbreaking and frustrating for Mrs. Moskowitz not to know more. And in our next segment, we will push Berkowitz to reveal more about his alleged cohorts. Nobody else plays stuff like this. By far, the most controversial part of our interview with David Berkowitz is his assertion that he did not act alone, that members of a satanic cult helped him. Never before has Berkowitz said that, and many are skeptical. But investigative journalist Maury Terry is one of those who believes Berkowitz, and for 10 years has pressed him for details. It was a dreary fall morning when I returned to upstate New York for another on-camera session with David Berkowitz. Over the years, I investigated numerous possible accomplices of David Berkowitz. Among them were several women and a handful of former police officers. The Queens District Attorney also suspected women and a cop may have been involved. Finally, I had the opportunity to ask David Berkowitz directly. 
Was there a present or former Yonkers police officer involved in this group in any way? Yes, there was. Would that have been one former officer or more than one, or do you know? Uh, I think just one that I know of. I know you don't like talking about the so-called Son of Sam letters, but I have one question. Would I be correct in saying that those letters were a group effort rather than the work of one individual? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, that was a group thing. Again, part of the role, the goal, was to uh, create an atmosphere of terror, you know, as a, as a to Satanism. We felt that that, you know, it was part of the thing to create that atmosphere of uh, terror or fear or whatever. Were any of the 44 shootings done by females? Uh, yes. Would that have been one shooting or two? Uh, one I know of, possibly two. Would that have been the Virginia Voskarichian shooting and or the Carl De Niro shooting? Uh, I know that uh, the Carl's uh, it was a definitely a, a woman. And uh, the other one I'm not quite sure about. Berkowitz was being evasive about the killing of Virginia Voskarichian, who was shot on a Queen Street while walking home from school. I persisted, asking about a suspect spotted at the scene. That would have been the person with the ski cap, watch cap on, sweater? Yeah. Would that have been a woman? Yeah. Now, would that woman have been from New York or elsewhere? Uh, I believe uh, from, from elsewhere. I'm not exactly sure. You mean you didn't know the woman that well? No. Nah. Meaning let's not talk about it? Yeah. It was time to change the subject. But Berkowitz had exposed one of the glaring contradictions in the Voskarichian murder. Two suspects were observed at that scene. This one was clearly Berkowitz. Yet in his confession to being the lone son of Sam, he claimed to be this person in the ski cap, the shooter. It simply didn't make sense. Could you describe what role you played? Well, I just, uh, like some of the others, just to, just to walk around and uh, be a lookout and everything. And, uh, Berkowitz told Maury Terry off-camera that he is still afraid and he has a scar on his neck that proves he can be hurt in prison. He will tell us what happened and why he is finally talking, coming next. Travel arranged through Continental. One airline can make a difference. One pass lets you earn free travel faster than any other airline. That's the difference on Continental. On Friday, these women were sold as infants. Now, Inside Edition joins their search for a pass that was taken away. Tonight at 9, 8 central. Home improvement won't be on. So why not check out the sexiest show on television? I've been dying to make love to you all afternoon. I deserve that. Get hooked on Melrose Place. Tonight at 9 on Fox 5. Tonight, take a daring look into college dorms and see how students are sexing it up. Watch Sex Out on Campus tonight on Fox 5. This Thursday, for one day only, you can save 15% off every item in every James Way store. You even save an additional 15% off things that are already on sale. Save 15% off men's and ladies' fashion. 15% off toys, housewares, health and beauty aids, home furnishings. 15% off every item in every James Way store. Even sale items. This Thursday, Veterans Day, for one day only at James Way. Hyperkeratosis, symptom, persistent, itchy, flaky scalp. Solution, Neutrogena T-Gel. It works. There's a price to pay. When you sell your soul to the devil, they, people fail to realize that the devil is going to come one day and say, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, but I'd like your soul right now. So why is the Son of Sam killer finally talking after 16 years? What does he have to gain from this? In our third report today, Berkowitz tells Maury Terry about his change of heart. After his arrest, and while New Yorkers called for his blood, 
Berkowitz told an incredible story to authorities. The confession about the, uh, the dog spoke and all of that, yeah. was that part of the cover story? Yes, yes it was. Yeah. But, you know, the, <laughs> sadly, the, the psychiatrists or the psychologists, they, they're so blind, you know, I tried to explain to them what was happening, but they couldn't gra grasp it, who Sam really was. And I hate to talk about this because people have made a joke about this for so very long, you know, the talking dog and well, everything, let's... and Sam. But basically, I had given them the whole sh thing in a nutshell, and they never quite caught on that the highest ranking demon of the Druids is Sam Hain. S-A-M-H-A-I-N, that's how you say right. Sam Hain. And these people who died, uh, the victims, uh, sadly, were for him. So this worked two ways. You had Sam Hain, um, and you also had Sam Carr and his sons. Yeah, right, right, right. So would I be correct that the term son of Sam, or actually sons of Sam, worked on a couple of levels? Is that true? Yes, that's true, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why did you take the rap for all of these people? At this time, I had really sold myself out to our little group, and I, I was like a gung-ho soldier for them, and so I just was sticking loyal, you know, said, well, you know, I'm going to hang, stand my ground, and, and for many years, for many years, I just kind of laid the path to myself. I had done that purposely. I also felt very guilty, too. I felt like, well, what the hell, you know? I, uh... I did shed innocent blood. I hurt people that didn't deserve to be hurt, and so what the hell if I take the rap for two or, or ten? David Berkowitz was just entering the second year of his life sentence when a would-be executioner came calling. Another inmate tried to take my life by uh, cutting my throat with a, a prison-made razor weapon. It took 56 stitches to close the wound, and Berkowitz wears a deep scar as a reminder of the vicious slashing. I'm lucky to be alive. Is that the scar? Yeah, that's the scar, yeah. When I went down to the infirmary, uh, the doctor there who stitched me up said it was a miracle that I lived. He still doesn't like to talk about the attack, and he has never said who did it. Berkowitz says he fought the influence of Satanism until the late 80s when he found God. I don't think that if I would, uh, if I would still been out there, I probably would have died, just like the Carr brothers, just like others. If uh, I didn't become a Christian, I, I may have uh, died a long time ago. I truly believe that. Berkowitz had flirted with Christianity several times in his life, but he says his true conversion came in 1988, when a fellow inmate gave him a pocket Bible to read. The words began to seem ver very real, you know, in other words, as if God, God were talking to me, you know. It says... Uh, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And, and you I, saw yourself. Yeah, and I saw myself, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and he said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. And I was saying, you know, boy, you know, I made such a mess of my life, and uh, does the Lord even hear me? Will he even pay attention to a sinner like me? And, uh, but one day, and I even forgot where it was, I was reading a passage of Scripture, and the words just touched my heart so much that I, I started to just kind of break down and, and cry. I started reading my Bible, and Jesus set me free. Don Dickerman is a minister from Hearst, Texas, who travels to prisons around the United States. He has seen the best and worst of Berkowitz. When he was arrested and eventually went to prison, I wrote him a letter and basically said, uh, David, God still loves you, and uh, Jesus can save you. Well, he wrote me right back and said, uh, when I get out of here, I'm going to kill you. I didn't write him a lot after that, but for whatever reason, God kept him on my heart over the years, and uh, I was preaching in his prison, the Sullivan prison, a few years ago when I met David personally. And at that time, he had already accepted Christ, and there was an immediate bonding and uh, we, we're we very close today. Love you. I love you, too. Love Amen. you, too. Don, during the course of your ministry, you have met hundreds of inmates who have said that they have been saved by Christ and come to Christianity. How would you gauge David Berkowitz's sincerity? 
David's sincere, he's genuine. Uh, his reasons for being involved in this are, are all pure and they're proper. And I'm, uh, I'm proud of David's life today. Uh, as, as anyone, I'm sorry for all the victims that were involved, but I'm proud of what I've seen happen to David Berkowitz. The Lord has brought, brought us a long way. Yes, he has. <laughs> Dickerman says Berkowitz practices what he preaches, teaching a Bible class and by volunteering to work with emotionally troubled inmates. They need some help. They need guys to, someone to talk to, someone to help them make their bed and, and get them dressed and so forth. Someone to uh, be a, a friend and uh, listen to them when they have their problems. Berkowitz now spends his time in jail writing letters. I write to those people. We, my friend and I, uh, my friend who lives down south, uh, her name is Alice, we uh, get Bibles together to send them overseas. Uh, Christian literature, and we really have some good relationships with those people. Berkowitz right now, says that his faith has made his life behind bars more bearable. When I first started out in my prison sentence, and doing so many consecutive life sentences, totaling more than 300 years, there's no legal possibility of any type of, of uh, parole or anything, so I know that I'm in prison for the rest of my natural life. and. Uh, only through my faith in Christ has it kept me from, from, like, losing my mind or just giving up in despair. Berkowitz says that his faith also helped him deal with the guilt of his crimes. Do you feel the pain day by day for the victims and the innocent who die? Yeah, 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 sure. I, I, can, I can't imagine the, the hardship that they go through, the ones that are left behind, even some of the ones that were wounded. Some got hurt pretty bad. and. I just, there's nothing I can do. I, I pray for them. I pray for them. Well, as we have said, the Son of Sam murder case remains open. Police say they will examine any and all new evidence. Our investigation will also continue, and we will keep you posted in the weeks to come. And Inside Edition will be right back. And here's what's upcoming on Inside Edition. They think nothing of doing this with tax dollars. Would you pay 156 bucks to ride two blocks in a car? Guess what? You already did. Inside Edition exposes bureaucrats taking you for a ride. I was real late for the meeting. You're late for a meeting? Could, could I ask who you are, sir? Inside Edition Steve Wilson confronts public servants treated like fat cats. You know what it costs to have that driver sit around and, and wait for you? Don't. Buckle up for a trip down Squander Street. That report and a lot more tomorrow, and that is it for us today. We hope you have enjoyed Inside Edition. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching us. We'll see you next time.